Hi, HRN listeners. We're celebrating our 15th anniversary, and we have a really fun campaign and an ask for you. This 15th anniversary tour is aiming to bring you closer to unique food and music experiences in some of the most exciting cities in America. All the while, we're raising funds to support our work empowering the next generation of food system storytellers through our fellowship programs. Here's how it works. Donate to HRN and be entered into a raffle in the city of your choice to win a dinner for two at a noteworthy restaurant and tickets for two to a concert at a prominent local venue. We have incredible partners in New York, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Nashville, Las Vegas, Charleston, Asheville, and Ardmore, Pennsylvania, who have donated a meal for two and two tickets to a concert of the winner's choice. And all donations help fund our fellowship programs, where we're helping to build essential workforce readiness skills and food system storytelling skills. Check out heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. That's heritageradionetwork.org 15. Thank you. Today's program has been brought to you by greatbrewers.com a social media marketing platform dedicated to promoting the world's great brewers and the beers they create. For more information, visit greatbrewers.com. You're listening to Heritage Radio Network, broadcasting live from Bushwick, Brooklyn. If you like this program, visit heritageradionetwork.org for thousands more. Hey, welcome to Beer Sessions Radio on the Heritage Radio Network. It's January 29th, 2013. I'm Jimmy Carboni from Jimmy's Number 43 and the Good Beer Seal. We've got a great show tonight. First, thanks to our sponsor, GreatBrewers.com. Thanks again for supporting us. Go to GreatBrewers.com, learn more about beer. Check out the Beer Cloud if you want to really know where to get beer. And thanks to the people at the Good Beer Seal, GoodBeerSeal.com. What a show we have tonight. It's our first official five-borough show. We've got... Ryan from Adobe Blues in Staten Island. I'll, 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 you say your name and what bar you're from. So, <laughs> well, it's too late now. Yeah, let's we'll start over. Come on, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Ryan. Uh, yeah, I manage Adobe Blues in Staten Island. Uh, I'm Heather, and this is Jeff Rush. Hello. <laughs> and we uh, we own the Pine Box Rock Shop in Brooklyn. All right. I'm uh, Brian Dwyer. I'm the assistant brewer at Single Cut Beersmiths. And I'm Rich Pisetta, the principal brewer of Single Cut Beersmiths. And what borough? In the proud borough of Queens. Queens! Ooh. Queens has breweries right. now. Awesome. Hey, and uh, I'm Sean McCain from the Bronx Brewery. What borough am I from? Good one. <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmy Carboni from Manhattan and Jimmy's number 43. All right. So we have a great show lined up tonight. Some new folks. The Good Brew Seal is always growing. It's uh, supporting uh, small beer bar owners in New York City. And uh, Ryan from Adobe Blues, you've become a regular guest. It's great having you on, man. I have, right? Yeah, yeah I, I like it. It's it's great. Really, I just come for the beer. So, so you said you, you just recently <laughs> did a beer dinner. Yeah, we did. We did our first beer dinner for uh, Coast to Coast Toast um, a couple weeks ago. Is that the Vanderburg and DeWolf? Yeah, uh, yeah, excitement? yeah. That it's a great crazy. event. Um, it was postponed in New York, just in New York, uh, due to the hurricane. So they did it January fifteenth, uh, and we yeah put together our first one. Had some great beers and uh, paired them up all with pork. And, uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, I'm seeing the rise of beer dinners. I mean, talking about, like, trends for 2013, um, we used to always do a, a few here and there, but we did one last – on Monday night, it was with the Spanish Craft Beer from uh, Iberian Beer United, and a couple weeks ago, we did something with Castle A, and, and they keep selling out. So I guess people are catching on, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, and, w- and what are some good beers you have on draft right now? Uh, right now on tap, uh, we have Against the Grain, Hacksaw, Jim Chuggin. <laughs> They're, nice. yeah, the, the, they're exactly the second in their uh, greats of wrestling series. Uh, we also have a, a Tagaver Hop, uh, Tired Hands, Bittersweet Symphony, uh, Elysian Valhalla, uh, Kostritzer, and Einger Brauweiss. Nice. Do you do you buy the beer at Adobe Blues? I do. You really do a great job. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, there's a lot out there, and there's a lot we want to try and. How many uh, tap lines do you guys have? We over? just have the five lines. Just five. Just five, yeah. And, you know, we do one keg and, and move on to something else. That's great. Yeah, which is it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Um, we do have two lines that are permanent. Um, 
but the other three I just kind of get to play with. And, so what are your permanent lines? Uh, the Ianger Browise yep. and uh, Newcastle Brown Ale. Mm-hmm. Wait, Newcastle? Yep. Okay, cool. I right? think Sean's going to make you a sales <laughs> visit soon. Yeah, I'm actually going to stand down like tomorrow. Oh, so what would you? you tomorrow, so this is a good tomorrow. segue. So if, if you're a salesman for a craft brewery like Bronx Brewery, Sean, mm-hmm. and, and you've got some, some a great beer bar that still has like a legacy line like Newcastle, right? So what of your beers would you pitch to replace the Newcastle? It would with? be the Bronx Pale Ale. I mean, uh, the Newcastle, you know, Brown Ale is a wonderful beer. Do not get me wrong. I'm not trying to right. It's classic. You. It's classic. Yeah. People know it. They like think, it. You need to have that something that people can appreciate when they walk into someplace right. new or someplace old that they know they can get. Um, and I would say that that's why I make the beer that I make, which is a pale ale, because it's a beautiful, easy drinking beer. And uh, I think Newcastle, England's a lot further than the Bronx, and I think my beer tastes better. <laughs> <laughs> so drink, uh, Rich. Go on. Can I throw my hat into the yeah, ring here? Of course, man. Do you have any lagers on tap? Uh. No. I think you Wait. need to have a lager on tap that's made locally. Yes. There you so go. So what, what do you have to offer, Rich, from Single Cut Beer Smith? Well, uh, yeah, well, we um, half our production is devoted to lagers, and we've committed ourselves to that pursuit in that we've actually invested in lagering tanks, which no wow. one does when, yeah, that's when they make lagers. So um, it's just an expression of how serious we take it, and we think that lagers are a real um, platform for – growth, experimentation, and sort of new frontiers in craft beer because lagers are the one area in craft beer that have been neglected. You know, everyone, I guess, uh, associates lagers with the macros, so therefore they, right. they're insipid and boring and, and stupid beers, but that's really not the case. I mean, and I think that um, you can be just as creative and experimental with lagers as you can with ales, so that's sort of our goal, and that's what we've been uh, starting Rich, to do Rich, hold on one second. Heather, what's the first beer that you poured from us? Oh, uh, that's the Outrage IPA. From, co- Crossroads. from Crossroads. Crossroads Outrage so IPA. So our friend Ken Landon texted me today and said, you're, you're, uh, my IPA is going to be on your show today. And yeah, we are big fans. Yeah. It's great. This so you guys are the Pine Block Rock Shop. We're trying to make sure everybody gets introduced. You're the Pine Box Rock Shop. You're a, a new, new bar for the Good Beer Seal. And you really like that little stalwart place out here in Bushwick to get good beer. Oh, well, thanks. You know, we, uh, yeah. we put a lot of love in. We have, we have 16 lines. Um, but I do know what he's saying about having an old standard on draft because when I, uh, I managed a bar in the city for several years and I had a really hard time getting the owner to agree to switch over to local or craft brews because he just expected that regular revenue from like kind of a standard beer like a Newcastle. Um, but in Bushwick, we're allowed to have a lot more uh, uh, experimentation. You know, people I feel like are more open and yeah. are really down for that sort of, not DIY, but definitely local. We actually tried that at first. We had a couple lines that we put Bud Light up regularly and Yingling up regularly. We got about got about six months in, and we're like, what the hell are we doing? Like, there's no real demand for this, and we're at the point now where we have you know a craft equivalent, more or less, for lack of a better term. When people come in looking for a Stella, oh, well, we don't have Stella, but we have the 1933 you know, single cut or, you know, uh, we carry Sly Fox, O'Reilly Stout instead of Guinness, and uh, yeah, it's been working out pretty well. That's great. I think that's the way a lot of people do it. They start replacing standards with the new craft beers. Well, with the whole craft beer movement, people are much more receptive than they even were like you know five years ago. You know, people are willing to try something before they just thought it was going to be like some weird ultra heavy, especially with session beers now becoming a craft beer thing. Um, I think a lot of like you know, kind of like old-fashioned beer drinkers, for lack of a better term, and like a lot of kids are really into like, or are, are willing to go that extra mile to try something that is out of their comfort zone. What I'd like to do now is, is to take the time to, to have you guys talk a little bit about how you opened your bar and, you know, why it became a craft beer, you know, focused place. Well, um, well, we both uh, both worked at the, the same place in the city for for a long time, the uh, the Crocodile Lounge. It's uh, one of the free pizza bars um, up on 14th Street there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, their focus is the, the college crowd that's coming in for the free pizza. So not really a lot of emphasis on, on beer there. Uh, but that's that's where we spent, you know, what, a good five, six years? My joke was that I came with the place because I actually worked with, for the bar that was there before, which was the cellar. Nice. And they just sort of kept me on. Yeah. Uh, so I think my tenure was closer to six. Yeah. But, you know, we've been bartending in New York for almost ten years now, and it's all been in the city. So it's all college bars, you know, East Village stuff. So how did you end up in Bushwick at, at Pine Box Rock Shop? Well, we were looking to open for probably a good three years, and we saved up the money ourselves to do it because, you know, the market had crashed and there was no loaning anybody money. 
and uh, we could afford Bushwick. <laughs> you know, yeah. at <laughs> like, the time, yeah, Williamsburg was kind of out of our reach at that point. Not that we didn't look out there, you know, but uh, I'm glad that didn't work. Though. Yeah, and I mean, I knew this neighborhood. Like, I'd go to the rec room, you know, for trivia. I had friends who lived out here. You um, walk the dog out here. All yeah, the time. it's Bushwick. Strange in that, like, everything is kind of behind. Almost looks like a front, you know, like it's it's a scary warehouse. And then you walk in and it's, you know, a beautiful restaurant, you know. So it's hard to know unless you really, you know, put yourself out there. But yeah, it's well, been really awesome. great to us. And so, like, so what are some of the, the beers and breweries that that we can often find at your place? Because I know I, you've got like twenty tra- taps, right? We have sixteen, and 16? we're adding a cast. We will be going cask uh, sooner than later. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. You know what they say once you go cask. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm scared of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we like to offer a lot of good local stuff. Right now, locally, we have up the uh, Six Point Resin, uh, the uh, Single Cut uh, Dean uh, Pacific Northwest Mahogany Ale. There's a lot of words in that one. I'm impressed that you got that right. <laughs> that was awesome. try, try saying it after you've had a few. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll come back to that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Brian talking to the mic. But Rich, uh, what beer are we drinking right now? I'm going to let Brian answer that. Yeah, because you guys brought it. Uh, So this is, yeah, actually, uh, Heather and Jeff brought this, which we didn't know about, but uh, this is the Single Cut Billy Full Stack IPA. So it's part of our uh, IPA series, the Billy series. So we have the 18 watt at 5%, uh, the half stack, and then the full stack. And the full stack is uh, 127 IBUs, and that's I'm doing that with uh, quotes because it's one hell of a beer. And uh, it's 8.6%. Um, and we've dry hopped it twice as well. So, so when you guys are in New Brewery, you know, at Single Cut, Beer Smith, and Queens, so do you target certain key key bars like like Pine Box Rock Shop and Adobe Blues? Yeah, absolutely. No, no question. I mean, uh, fortunately, we um, you know that we all wear a lot of hats in the brewery. You have to as a startup, but um, you know, if you're going to be if you're really going to get traction, you've got to have people who are experts in each uh, jurisdiction in the brewery. So we've got. A couple of really smart salespeople that um, have come from local distributors and know all the best pubs uh, are aware of the marketplace and and you know the beers that are out there. Um, so they inform us quite a bit. And uh, look, I mean, Brian and I have done our fair share of drinking throughout New York City, and uh, you know we're pretty aware of all the cool pubs, um, but we can't possibly know all of them. So someone like Mark and Trista, who are our sales team, uh, who do know all these pubs. It's really great to have, and um, Mark's had a long relationship with uh, Pine Box, and uh, that was one of the first accounts that he suggested, and um, it sounded great to me. I was like, absolutely. Um, so, yeah. And then Sean, Sean McCain, you've been a, a beer salesman rep for a long time before you were with Victory, and now you're, now you're a partner at the Bronx Brewery. Yeah. Um, what is it like for you? You know, there's these great bars around the city. You do target certain places? Or Absolutely. Are you well, I was for just talking vibe, to, uh, to our good people at the Pine Box before. We did a, a soft launch in Brooklyn uh-huh. last December where I basically sat around with Matt Lefkowitz and I was like, all right, so I want these places to have the ability to buy my beer first. Um, I'm not going to go in there. I'm not going to sell it. I want it. I want this to be because it's a distributor relationship that I have with the brewery as well. But these guys get it first, and Pine Box was one of the first ones. We thought that that was a mistake, no. that the truck accidentally <laughs> left us, a.k.a. a Bronx. We're like, we're Even not going to say anything. We're just going to put it marketing, on. marketing, right? No, I, absolutely not. And I think, what, what did I say before I said, I was like, you know, I wanted to plant my seed at the right places, so I, what better place to plant your seed in Bushwick than the Pine Box? You sound like an NFL football player, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I got a parking ticket earlier and yelled at the cop, and so now I sound really gravelly. <laughs> you have four wi- four ex wives and six children. Uh, just one ex wife and one child. <laughs> it's the kind of guy. This, this is a little snapshot of the beer community. So, all right, let's make a toast and, and let's just cheers everybody. This is cheers, awesome. Cheers. It's a five boroughs in the house. Yeah, yeah. Look cheers. at this. All right, I want to talk about politics. No, but we'll talk more about beer. The the the, the big question for me is it, the real story here tonight is Rich Buchetta. Single cut beer smith. You know, we, we have a couple more segments we'll be talking all night. But when we first met you a year and a half ago, Garrett Oliver was in the room and he made a joke about the Buchetta cut and made fun of your name. But you know, for a long time, you know, you you, you were a, a home brewer and people right. recognize your beers as being really good. Thank you. But but you had a dream. I mean, you were talking for a long time about opening a brewery. You were able to raise money. 
Um, just tell us what you went through because at one time you were a home brewer and right. you're on our show and you were right. talking about opening a brewery up in Rockland County, New York. That's right. And just tell us the steps you went through and and, and why you didn't open in, in which towns you looked at and why you didn't open there. Well, it's, it's, it's eye opening for a lot of us. Yeah, it's it, well, it's funny. The whole thing, the whole story, really did a full 360 because when I first started developing my business plan, my first instinct was to open in Queens. I'm from Queens originally. Um, at the time, and uh, it was the one borough, second largest population in New York City that still didn't have a brewery of its own. So it seemed like a slam dunk to me. But, you know, I was really uh, a little uh, weary of uh, what, I, what I perceived to be um, the rent, which I thought was going to be astronomical, and as well the uh, red tape. And I was, in fact, only right on uh, one of those two uh, aspects. The um, New York City red tape is everything you hear about. Uh, it lives up to promise. It's pretty pretty heinous, but um, the rent was actually not um, was comp- was very comparable to Rockland County. So after a pretty exhaustive search through Rockland, we were always going to self distribute. So you know, whether we were in Rockland or elsewhere, uh, as long as we were accessible to New York City, I felt that it was okay. Um, but when uh, we you know fortuitously now I can say couldn't find anything that met our criteria in Rockland, I thought you know. Let me give Queens a shot. I haven't even thought of checked it out. And once I did, I was amazed that it was within the same cost bracket as what I was looking at in Rockland. So at that point, I was committed to Queens. Um, and the space that um, we finally did find uh, was not was was another you know mini adventure because our brewery we always wanted to be a real community based brewery. We we were all about New York City and we really want to bond with the residents of New York City and have them visit our brewery. And um, the thing about New York City zoning laws are such that as a brewery, you've got to open in a um, part of the city that's uh, zoned for manufacturing. And those um, neighborhoods are not necessarily the most pleasant places that you'd want to visit. Uh, So, you know, that didn't really strike a chord for me because I wanted the whole experience to be very positive and true to our brand. So when I finally did find the space in uh, Astoria, it was, there was no second thought to it. Um, That's awesome. We're going to talk more. Let's take a short break. We'll be back in a few minutes on the Beer Sessions Radio. You're listening to This Body by Pamela Royal on the Heritage Radio Network.org. Like what you hear so far? Support the network and become a member. Membership helps us bring you the best food radio in the world and gives you access to thousands of dollars in discounts at the sustainably minded businesses that support us. To become a member, visit Heritage Radio Network.org today. Hey, welcome back to Beer Sessions Radio on the Heritage Radio Network. Robert at Roberta's in Bushwick, Brooklyn, having a great time with representatives of all five boroughs of New York City craft beer. Ryan from Adobe Blues. Ryan, you know, what do you think of the conversation so far? <laughs> uh, it's good. Um, yeah, I like to talk about uh, about the local, you know, local beer, which is awesome. Uh, I've been thinking about it a lot lately. It's one of the challenges that I have in Staten Island is... Uh, is getting the new local breweries because there's not a whole lot of places in Staten Island that are going to take it, and uh, especially the self-distributed stuff. They're not going to throw a keg on a truck and come to me in Staten Island and pay the tolls and spend half their day. <laughs> you know, well, so. I mean, I have to say, I'm actually going. I, when I was joking, I wasn't joking earlier. I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm coming I've, to Staten Island tomorrow. I've, I've heard you coming out. I'm, word's, word's getting around. <laughs> <laughs> the word is out, but I mean, I'm, and I'm looking forward to it because. To be fair to Staten Island, there are like five great places there that are going to pour the beer. Adobe oh, yeah. definitely is rocking the top of that. But it's difficult from a beer salesman perspective or from a new brewery. Like we're focusing on, like even Bushwick right now, it's got this wonderful like onslaught of, of great places that are coming up that you come here, then I'll, well, wait a minute, um, Williamsburg, South Williamsburg, Bed-Stuy, Clinton Hill, all, yeah, Fort totally. Green, all these places are right there. Whereas when you go to Staten Island, you're there, we're which is why out. I'm going. Yeah. Because I'm going to 
Who yeah. knows, who knows a joke about Staten Island? It's not a joke, man. How did, how did it get to be named Staten Island? God only knows. <laughs> when the Dutch came into the harbor, they said, Staten Island? <laughs> That's the worst joke ever. I can't believe I had to tell a joke. Guys, wow. we got to lighten this party up. So, what are we drinking, Sean? Speaking of lightening up, let's lighten this it up beer with is a dark good. What is beer. It? Huh? All right, this is our 5.7% Bronx Black Pale Ale. It's, uh, it's a dichotomy. I mean, it's a little bit, when you think of black pale ale you're like yeah go fuck yourself that's right i cussed i apologize sorry um uh, heather the, did you want to cuss sure nah. fuck yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> right, now we're feeling good now go we're to pine good. box rock shop and cuss <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> pine box motherfucking rock the cuss, shop. cuss club <laughs> <laughs> no but see the whole idea behind this beer is you close your eyes when you smell it we use uh, el dorado and citra um both in the boil and, and dry hopping it so you get this tropical notes of guava and mango a little bit of pear uh, and then the malts, seventy nine percent of it are American two row, pale malts. You know that's that's what pale's about. Seven percent is chocolate malt, and fourteen percent is a little. This bit is of a, a, bla- a black beer. It's a dark as night. So you had the beer. you had the launch at Jimmy's number forty three, which Jimmy's was awesome. 43, I did awesome party. I've been there a couple times. I you like guys that did place. A great job. Yeah, the guy that owns that place, not a bad dude. Sometimes he's all but, right. You know who the guy I really want to talk to tonight? We're trying to jump this around, but. Brian Dwyer. Yeah. So, Rich, you, you stabbed him. Brian was a rep for Sierra Nevada in New York City. I was, yeah, it was your rep, Jimmy. You, 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 were, you, really got, you know a lot about the craft beer scene. Um, how did you make the decision for, from working as a rep to, to becoming a brewer yeah, at Single Cut Beer Smith? Great yeah. question. Fantastic question. Uh, it was always something that I've been passionate about. In fact, uh, right before I started working for Sierra Nevada, I met Rich um, when I was interning at Greenpoint Beer Works, um, and he was working there, and uh, he kind of showed me the ropes as well as uh, as well as Mark, who is now our head of sales. So they became friends of mine through that. So brewing has always been a passion of mine. It's been something that I've done for years, um, you know, just in my home, home brewing, and uh, and that's how we got connected to it. So you know, I. I Really enjoyed working for Sierra Nevada, and I think it was invaluable to learn the, the New York City craft beer environment, which is pretty unique. Um, but brewing was always somewhere in my f- future. Rich was just fortunate enough, or or stupid enough, I'm not sure which it is, to to ask me to come along. So it's been it's been fantastic so far. So tell us I about the, Rich the wants to tell us about the brewery lay, layout. Let's, let's, let's let me ask the questions, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, because you know, Rich, you're, you're the you're the boss, but Brian's Italian. So Brian, come here. Yeah. Tell us about the brewery layout. What kind of system you have, and and what you guys went through setting it up. So uh, our basic system is a uh, we we're on a 35 barrel brewing system. Um, we've got one 35 barrel conical fermenter, two 70 barrel conicals, and two 70 barrel uh, lagering tanks, as well as one uh, 70 bright tank and one 35 bright tank. So it uh, it's great, you know. We we have the, uh, the the potential to be to brew a one off batch and really get you know a select amount of kegs out of it, or to you know brew our year round beers on a regular basis, kind of on a larger batch. Um, so what we do is we brew two days in a row if we're going to do a seventy barrel batch, and that's that's us back there. And then the front of the brewery is actually a tap room. Um, so, you know, I know Rich wanted to make it an experience for people where they could come and see the brewery and hang out and, uh, and, you know, taste all the beers, uh, and then take Rowlers to go as well. So we've got the whole theme running through there, which is, um, you know, we're, we're a music themed brewery. So we've got a stage, um, in two weeks, we're going to start having bands every Saturday. Uh, and then we've got music playing at all times. We're open, uh, rock music primarily. We've got a record player. Um, so that's a single cut. So you guys have these really cool tap handles. They're like gu- guitars, right? That's right, guitar neck. Yeah. yeah. And why'd you come up with that, Rich? Well, uh, you know, when I had to come up with the name for the brewery, um, uh, I, <laughs> I I wanted to make sure that it was something original. Uh, so it had to be something personal. I didn't want to name the brewery after some mountain range or you know a dog or you know the other stuff that's been done three million times. Um, so Cheers. I'd been uh, I'd been a guitar player most of my Cheers. life and. Uh, Hey, Rich, guess what? 
We're drinking your beer, man. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thanks for making uh, what, What's this beer welcome. that we're drinking? Which You're, you're drinking the 18-watt IPA, so this is the um, sessionable oh, version of our yeah. uh, Billy series. It's 5% alcohol. Yeah. Great. You know what's uh, awesome? You're the founder. You're the, you're the owner. You're the awesome guy that made this happen. Yeah. And then, but the point is, you got a guy like Brian. <laughs> yeah. No, who's, no, who's, no, no, wait, can I come back to that? He knows the community. <laughs> I, I got cut off. There's always a Brian in the crowd. <laughs> I wanted to come back to that. Well, no. Uh, you know, we've been... I'll tell you, one of the critical things about a startup business, whether it's a brewery or anything else, is that chemistry in the staff is so critical. You, you know, everyone's wearing a lot of hats. There can't be a weak uh, link in the chain because, um, you know, there's just not that – you don't have any overlap, you know. Uh, and I've been incredibly fortunate. Everybody that we hired has been a real superstar. Uh, Brian has really uh, risen to What's the What's the name of this beer again? Uh, this is 18 Watt IPA. It's Huge. really good. You, Jimmy, you, Jimmy, he was in the middle of giving me a compliment. Please don't interrupt him from now on. Well, now I have to because he's a good talker. But we let's ask our I good think beer Jimmy's sale. fishing for a compliment. Richie, no, compliment no, no, Richard. Good beer sale panel over here. Okay, you got, you got Brian and, and Rich. Ask questions. Ryan, any questions you want to ask about their new startup brewery? Yeah. Because um, he's your buyer. you got to listen to him. So. Yeah, what's, uh, what's the plan? Is it to grow? Is it to stay the same size and do – more brews do you have plans to do just a kind of a you know steady line of year-round brews one-offs yeah what's happening good question ryan hey, um, thanks. we're we're <laughs> well we're committed to being being a new york city brewery 100 percent. that's why um you know we I, i've and i've done this every time i've been on your show jimmy i've always talked about the importance of my the importance for me of uh making sure that our beer was 100 percent brewed in new york city on premises um and uh, that's not, that's the reason what that uh, we've invested in a brewery of the scale that we have as a startup. Um, so we're committed to that. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're not looking to for a national or world domination or anything like that. Right. We're a New York City brewery, um, and we self distribute. So we want to service uh, our clients and give them the same level, uh, the same experience that. Our customers have, uh, and I think that we can achieve that through distributing the beer ourselves. So, you being in Staten Island, we wouldn't hesitate to come out and bring our beer out to you. Awesome. You know, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why that's why we want to self distribute. We love our relationship with our you, retailers. You do, you do have a great system now, Heather and Jeff. You have a question for uh, the new brewery in Queens? Oh, I have many. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Line them up. Come on. <laughs> let's, let's, Rich, let's do this short form. It doesn't have to be beer related. I did, did want to ask yeah. you short about your, uh, right. your brewery. There's a lot of old breweries here in this neighborhood that are now defunct, and I understand that this was like a pretty big brewing neighborhood. Right. Um, did you take over an older brewery out in uh, Queens, or you just... No, uh, no, that's a great question. Uh, no, um, is we, there we a took, history of, of that out there as well? There was there was quite a history. Yeah, there, uh, there there is you know there's kind of spotted um, from what I understand spotted old breweries around. I mean, one of the largest breweries was uh, Hellgate Brewery, which was was in Manhattan, but it's right across the way from where we are, um, and Hellgate is kind of connected to Queens. So um, there's definitely an old you know pre-prohibition brewing culture there or or there was um but you know some th there really hasn't been a brewing culture that's existed since prohibition um they, they brewed in guinness queens. in queens they did yeah the that's 40s, one of the that's one right? of the i think three breweries came back in queens after prohibition one of them was guinness and there were two more um but but there have been no new uh, breweries in Queens since this past year. Uh, this past year was the first time that those opened. Now there's uh, there's three of them, um, and I believe there's another in, in in planning at this point. So it's kind of a craft beer revolution you're, you're, in Queens. But you're the single cut. I mean, you guys really. I mean, I'm gonna give you guys props, and everyone here will agree. You 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 had a plan, Rich. You went out and did it. Yeah. And now you've got a place that's a destination in Astoria, Queens. People want to go there. You can get the beers. You're gonna have music, and you're making beer. And I think it's really awesome. Thanks, so, really and I've also it. haven't haven't tasted all these other beers. So, did you bring these beers tonight, or are they all at Pine Box Rock Shop? Uh, well, as Brian mentioned, coincidentally, uh, they happened to bring one of our beers, and it happened to be one of the beers that we didn't bring. So, the, thank you very much for that. That was perfect. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and how many beers are you making right now? 
we uh, today we've brewed eight different beers, and we've got. And I'm sorry, I didn't finish your your answering your question, Ryan, because I, I tend to blab a lot. No, answer drinking. my question. I've had a few beers, <laughs> and I'm getting motor now. So I, so tell I me the Rich, for that. Tell me the names of the beers you're brewing right now, because people want to know. <laughs> Keep me on track, Jimmy. Just give me give me the names of the beers. Uh, okay, we've got uh, the three Billies. Uh, we've got our 1933 lager. We've got um, the Yon, which is our Olympic uh, white lager, uh, which is a year-rounder. Um, but in addition to those, uh, we've got a vast amount of seasonals that we're going to continue to pepper. John, John, Mi- John Michael Dark Lyric Lager. We've got uh, Rudy Double Umlau Lager, which is uh, actually ferment- it's, it's aging in rum barrels right now. It's genetically uh, named. You have an umla. We do. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Hell's yes. Uh, (laughs) And then uh, I don't know. We've also got the Dean Pacific Northwest Mahogany, which you mentioned earlier, and uh, and the 1933 uh, Queens Lager, which is our our, that's our flagship. That's our 1933 is our uh, address 19-33, so it's very unique to Queens, uh, but it's also the year that Prohibition ended. That's. Awesome. Yeah, All right, you. hey guys, one, one second. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back in a few minutes on Beer Sessions Radio. Sorry. You're listening to Quitting Time by Pamela Royal on the Heritage Radio Network.org. Every Tuesday at 12 p.m., you can call food scientist Dave Arnold and ask any question you want. John from Chicago, you're on the air. Hey, hey, Dave. Who am I fooling? This is horrible stuff. Without glutamic acid, you die. It is a matter of taste, but there's a lot more fat in sausage than you think. Get ahead of the curve. Tune into Cooking Issues every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on HeritageRadioNetwork.org. Hey, hey, welcome back to Beer Sessions Radio on the Heritage Radio Network. You just heard a promo for Dave Arnold's great show. Hey, Dave Arnold, how do I keep my souffle from falling? You know, these are the kind of questions you can ask, and he's, he's a brilliant guy, and I listen to his show all the time on Heritage Radio Network. Here we are back in Beer Sessions Radio, and we're talking about the five boroughs of beer we get. Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, and Manhattan in one room. It's amazing. Never, it's actually the first time ever on our show, but we're talking about Rich Puchetta and, and Single Cup Beersmith. The big story, Brian Dwyer, your, your brewer. We got uh, Pine Box Rock Shop in the house and Adobe Blues from Staten Island. Now we're going to bring it back to the Bronx. So we, we've got a brewery in Queens. It's the first time that uh, there's a new production brewery in, in New York, really, in a long time. You, you, Rich, you really did a great job. And now we're talking about the next step. It's uh, Sean. We came from uh, the Bronx Brewery. Yeah, so what are you guys down. doing? I mean, you guys, you know, you can tell the truth. You, you guys have grown slowly. You're doing a great job. You're making your beer elsewhere. But you guys have a goal. Yeah. And what's the goal? To brew in the Bronx. I think that's the big thing right now is uh, as a young brewery, we've been around for a year and a half. And the whole idea is to figure out who we are and what we what we want to believe, what we believe in and what, what's style of beer and who do we want to present ourselves to the public because there's so many breweries out there. There's so many great breweries out there. Um, so we decided 
to sort of take a different trend and say, we make pale ales. We like pale ales. We can drink pale ales all day long, and we're just going to make delicious pale ales and allow our brethren in the brewing industry to go ahead and take... Sean, do you guys have big money behind the, you? <laughs> no. You don't. My mom's invested in this, and uh, look at me. Do I have money? No. So, the, so there, there's Chris and Damien. Damien <laughs> went to Damian UC Davis. He's a really good, talented yeah, brewer. Chris, so, and we so all Damian agree on Brown that. Is our is our brewmaster, um, and Chris Galan is our GM, and then you have me. And then behind that, it's just about you're 40, the best bill, beer salesman other, in New York City. Forty five other people and that you believe know it. in us and, and a loan that got us around the neck. <laughs> 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 other than that, yeah, I mean, so here's the deal. So we've been brewing out of uh, doing a co-proprietorship out of Cottrell Brewing in Pocketuck, Connecticut for the last year and a half. That's worked out great. We bought an 80-barrel fermenter um, and uh, at a 40-barrel fermenter, and that's allowed us to be able to bring beer into the city, get our name out, get our proof of concept. And then now we, uh, we're signing the lease on our new place in Port Morris. I'd love to give you the address. But Chris and David. Well, so that's like news. So what? Start over. Yeah, next fall we're actually going to have uh, we'll be brewing out of the Bronx. So you have a lease coming up? Yeah, dude. I got a brew house, baby. Dude, let's toast to that. That's yeah. that's news. All right on yeah. the radio. It is. That's it where you so. announce things. Yeah. Well, and 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 I actually I have the specs of our brewery. Hmm, I do. That's uh, this guy actually knows it because he brews in it because <laughs> he bought it. <laughs> this is what's on the waiting list as soon as uh, as soon as we get the. The, the ground paved, and we get everything. Well, you're going to do the set. same system as single cut? No, we're doing a 20-barrel no. system. Yeah. Um, we're going to do a 20-barrel system, and this is the part that I have to look at my notes at because I'm not sure. Not being a brewer, I'm a beer salesman. I learned long ago that I am a eh, I'm pretty good home brewer. But, but Sean, I, what I, are the specs? friends that are home brewers. All right. Pick it it's up. A, it's a, well, it's a 20-barrel house, 40-barrel uh, hot liquor tank, 40-barrel cold liquor tank, two 20-barrel fermentation, for fermentation tanks, two 40 uh, fermentation tanks, uh, three 40 barrel conditioning brake tanks, a uh, yeast propagation tank, a yeast brink, uh, and an automated two station cake washer filler, and a cask automated canning system, 30 cans per minute. And we're also doing a uh, tabletop bottle filler. So we wow. can do our, we're so doing a lot of barrel much, aging like, coming I up. Did, how much is that going to cost? <laughs> Fuck, too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. It's a, it's a DME system. Um, that's, that's, that's who we're getting it from. And, uh, yeah, that's the 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 majority of the money that we raised was to make sure that we could get the lease on the place in the Bronx to get this uh, brewing equipment and set out our contracts uh, to get the the you, ingredients. I know you you're really ambitious. I mean, Rich was ambitious in his way, and he's got the the first great yeah. new production brewery. In and New I love City. it. I mean, the way he's doing it is, is yeah. very different than ours because he is all owning, and I. I applaud that. And we looked at that when we're looking at a business model and a business plan. You have to figure out. But you've got you've got your, your own secret things. Like you're already in Madison Square Garden, right? Yes, Madison. So you're Square doing Garden. like the big stuff. Yeah. You might try I'll to get in, into I'm, Yankee Stadium. I'm going right? to be in Yankee See? State. Yeah, I'm. I'm owning. New I mean, York City. you're like a serious beer salesman. You know the market. Yeah. You scare me. <laughs> it's just the beard. <laughs> are you going to uh, are you going to bottle in twenty two ounce bottles? We currently do actually. Awesome. We we self bottle and self label and self wax all of our bourbon and uh, Zinfandel and uh, we do a big barrel aging series right now. Awesome! I would love to sell some Bronx bombers. I only we do twenty cases at a clip. So right now we're so small. That's why the beautiful thing about the new space is it's going to allow us to do a, a larger barrel aging program. But right now in the tanks I've got um, two fifty five. Five gallon whistle pig uh, rye barrels aging with our rye pale ale. Beauty. Um, and then I have four 15 gallon um, gin barrels that used to be rum barrels that now have beer in them. Um, wow. And I tasted those on Friday and I don't want to sell it. I just want to <laughs> bathe in it one night. Cocktail one night beer. On, one night only. I don't Sean, know. Sean, how did you get into beer? We've been on the show a few times, I think five, but <laughs> I don't know, you have man. a great story because you're, you're, you're like an amazing beer salesman. People like you. You're personable. Wow. And you know the product. Jeez. Uh, wow. Thanks, man. But how'd you get into this? Because you're uh, like an actor, right? I was an actor. Yeah, I was an actor and then I, I, and a home brewer and I left, uh, I left that world to get into corporate America and make money and make my, my wife and life happy at that time. And then I realized that I'd was neither happy with either <laughs> and i said what do i want to do what do i believe in who's the community that i'd need to be a part of and it was it was beer okay it's beer so now we're gonna ask this super bowl is coming up a lot of bars show the super bowl yeah what would you recommend what beer would you serve and what dish would you serve well first of the all super bowl i party? would be on february 3rd i would be at uh 
Oh, jeez, man, I'm about to blow it because I'm uh, the beer here is good. <laughs> well, well done, Rich. Uh, no, we're gonna be we're gonna be at um, New York Beer Company on February third, drinking Br- Bronx Pale Ale. So it's like Bronx a Bronx Super Bowl party. Yeah, whatever. But I mean, you drink whatever the hell you want on Super Bowl. Have have a good time. But I personally would drink a pale ale only because it's a long game. And you're going to get belligerent. You don't need a Belgian quad or a Russian Imperial style to make that happen for you. you know, I, find a good I, I really like the yeah, Bronx Black. Find a good so you know. ale, Find a good beer to sustain <laughs> the that, balance. That's not what we do in Staten Island. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys do? For, <laughs> what are you guys doing for Super Bowl? We're doing, uh, we're doing like an all-you-can-eat taco bar, projecting the game, all-you-can-eat wings, and we're doing... Uh, all-you-can-eat taco bar? Yeah, man. Hard shell. It's going to be good. Next year, can we talk? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but we're doing uh, Anchor versus Flying yeah, Dog. Nice. Oh. So we're doing a uh, Canine Cruiser versus Old Foghorn. You can have a little Molly so we're doing a, up in that party. Uh, we're doing a Winter Brew versus a uh, a barley wine. Oof. Yeah. Awesome. So we're not we're not we're not messing around with pale ales for the Super Bowl. So yeah. Wow. And Jeff, yeah. what 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 are you guys going to do for what would you do for the Super Bowl at Pine Box Direction? Oh, well, what we are doing is uh, oh. turning our lines over to uh, San Francisco and Baltimore. Oh, uh, fuck yeah. Yeah, we've got uh, <laughs> uh, Anchor Porter, uh, 21st Amendment, uh, Sneak Attack, their new uh, Saison, and uh, Back in Black, uh, Speakeasy. Um, we got their uh, Prohibition, their Double Daddy, and their Witness. Uh, Flying Dog, we've got the, uh, we've got the Canine and the... Uh, the uh, IPA. What tell do you me, think stronger? Me still water, is, is for beer? Heavy seas, is, is, heavy seas, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But is, is San Francisco stronger for beer than, oh, than Baltimore? Yes. It is. And let yeah. me tell you this. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big Atlanta Falcons fan, and part of me was kind of hoping they would lose that game because we can't get anything from Atlanta up here. And San Francisco really paid off in that regard. You know what I decided? <laughs> it was the whatever the playoff game was. It was football, American football. Someone said, are you, you going to do like a, you know, a versus versus – Nine. I said no. I'm going to do like French craft beer night. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. And it's my friend Chris Kuzma, who's now the brewer at Five Way Gastro Pub. It's his birthday party, so uh, we we'll mix it up a little bit. So I'm doing French craft beer on Super Bowl. I like it. You and then so okay, avant-garde. you guys, Brian. I'm calling you guys. You guys, Brian and Rich, single cup beer smith. What would your ideal Super Bowl party be with your beers, and what food would you go with it? You could have some food pairings too, guys. Boy. Uh, well, I, I think so. I think for me, it's going to be something out of the ordinary. So I think I'm probably going to go with uh, the single cut full stack and some uh, some buffalo wings or something like that. Nice, some nice smooth double IPA, and then something with some uh, some spice to it. Um, and then I'll probably, if I was going in the single cut house, which I will be, uh, I'll be. Uh, Moving on to the 1933 Pilsner uh, or Queen's Lager. We're not, it's not a Pilsner style. Um, something nice, easy drinking, 5.4%. That, uh, that brings up something. Uh, Rich, I do want to, want to talk something. about that. Thanks for bringing that up, Brian. Uh, our 1933 uh, Queen's Lager, it's gotten a lot of uh, – there's been some controversy about it because um, – a lot of people like it, fortunately, and uh, people like yourself, Jimmy, are real fans of the beer, and uh, that's very that's very rewarding for us. Um, but a lot of people who expect it to taste like a Pilsner, a classic Pilsner, don't know what to make of it at times, and I say that's good because we didn't we don't set out to make any classic beer uh, in anything that we do because why the the market's already flooded with Pilsners and all you know very solid Pilsners. Why would we brew? Another Pilsner, even if it is local, you know, that's just your typical, you know, Bohemian Pilsner malt and Saz hops. It's been done to death. So, you know, we wanted to give it our own spin. So that's what you're tasting in that beer. Um, We still think it's every bit within category, um, but it's got our spin on it. So I think people have got to um, consider that when they taste the beer that it might it might be a little different than what your expectation is for a Pilsner. All right. Take a deep breath, Rich. <clears throat> I got emotional. I, I know you have a lot Zanantier to talk about. Zanantier Super so the, Bowl anyway, the Super Bowl's... <laughs> Thank you. Actually, oh, you the Super Bowl's over, and somebody won, but um, I just wanted to ask you guys that question. Um, you know, one, one thing about what... It, it's just amazing to be in this room. Again, it's our first yeah. time we've had representatives from five boroughs, either bars or breweries, 
And uh, it's kind of like the golden era of uh, New York City beer. Even five years ago, there was like, there's nothing like this. And I, it's not like an old man talking about that. So I'm going to say something sexy or something. Because Bree's not laughing in the, in the booth like she we're, used to. We're, we're smelling some uh, some utopia right now. So Oh, well, Heather, what did you bring? You guys really went to town. Pine Box Rock Shop in Bushwick. You guys really brought some cool beer. I have an ulterior motive. We're now serving the utopia. What? Yeah. Oh. So I brought it for you all to try. Um... Uh, you know, I've never had. So I've never had Utopia. <laughs> so, so, it's what, say, so who's like, it's Sam Adams, right? Yes, it's Sam Adams. How much does that bottle there? cost? What's the retail on that? Uh, a lot, it's, too much. It's a lot. What, what do you sell it so for? Twenty five dollars for a two ounce pour. Yeah, and we're what? not how much really making how much anything wait, back on wait, that. Wait, how much? It's twenty five dollars for a two ounce pour, and, and it's the profit that's margins it, are razor thin. All right, can I have a four ounce pour? I got a I got fifty dollars in my back pocket. Places to do that. Otherwise, you have to buy it for. You know, two hundred dollars, yeah, whatever it retails yeah, for. That's it. true. That's you know, great. That is, there is a, yeah, if you want to try. It. So why is that beer so expensive? Can you pour? I've mean, heard of it. Yeah. And I've, listen, guys, let's well, go back. Sam it. Adams Utopia. Let's have this as a little serious kind of beer, guys. Ryan, I've heard of the beer. I've never had it. I had no idea how expensive it was. Uh, I've looked into it. I know how expensive it is. Um, and yeah, I think twenty five bucks for a two ounce pour is. For what it costs, Pine Bock Rock Shop is Ow. pretty reasonable uh, with that beer. It's it like is whiskey. Expensive. Yeah, so what is it? I mean, what's Utopia? I mean, that's a dumb question, but I've been so focused on the small craft breweries. I know that Sam Adams is considered a craft brewery. Well, I had been reading about this, and his whole idea was to brew something that kind of pushes the outer limits of what a beer could be. Um, Sam Adams is a great beer. We don't serve it. I feel like it's, you know... Um, it's great for other bars. <laughs> it's a little too big for <laughs> yeah. You know? What is the ABV um, on this thing? Because I can't even put my nose in this glass. 29. Yeah. Holy cannoli. Which makes it the strongest uh, naturally fermented beer. So uh, you, you need to, to have a liquor license. You need a liquor license to sell this, right? I don't know. I bought it's it crazy. from a beer distributor. A beer, yeah. yeah, I think it's considered a beer. I think as long as you don't put, like it's not fortified, you don't have right. to have the liquor license. Right. Oh, my God. Huh. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. This is a, that's this really, is a treat. I mean, that's delicious. Yeah, it is good. It's very good. That is, um, it's really good. that's $25 a two ounce. Delicious. <laughs> Get at, it a pine box. Pine <laughs> box. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, but I just, you know, we keep wanting to, like, you know, go places that, you know, other, like, push the edge of, you know, what you can get at a bar, and, you know, we, we could offer it, and I thought it'd be really fun to do it, so. Well, we do kind of some barrel aging stuff. Like I said, we only have a 20 cases. You just made the allocation list. Yay! And I have Yay! a great I have a great idea. <laughs> Heather, here's an idea. You guys are on Heritage Radio Network. They're always trying to raise money because it's a nonprofit. You guys could donate a Sam Adams Utopia bath. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How much would you pay... <laughs> Imagine that someone's they're doing an auction for a Heritage Radio Network or a, a you know online auction. You say, you'll get a bath, and maybe Sam Adams would donate it. How much would you pay to have a bath of this? It would be pretty sick. I bet someone would call would the jacuzzi, and I'll create the bubbles. Yeah, it, would, it would be literally pretty sick. That's and we start to do this. So then Bronx can you Bronx can make the up smell of a bathtub of this. Can you? People would ask you if your house was burning down. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's the worst idea ever, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen people pay more for Stranger Things. But that's good. <laughs> well, we don't want to hear about your time in Tijuana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but hey, let's let's do a little toast. Um, we're going to close out soon. Again, thanks everyone for coming. Rich, uh, one more time, just just say a quick parting word because you really did fulfill your dream, and we're so happy to be. And the beers, you, the beers you brought tonight, mm. were really showing great. Thank you, thank you. These yeah. are all all our year rounders that we brought uh, tonight. And uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's the m- it's the hardest I've ever worked in my life. I have no social life. I can tell you, and I don't get much sleep. But it's awesome. I love it. But you love it. Yeah. And you still collect guitars too, right? Uh, no, I sold most of those to fund the brewery. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's passion. I love oh, that. Oh yeah. All right. And Ryan, anything coming up at Adobe Blues? Man, we're doing Super Bowl. Um, I'm gonna apparently have some single cut. I'm gonna hold these guys to it. Yeah. So we'll have that in oh, Staten Island. Yeah. No, no, no doubt. <laughs> I'm locking it down right now. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, lots of stuff coming up. It'll be good. And it, guys, Pine Box Rock Shop. Yeah, we have so, a we have a big Super Bowl party, and you can now get the Sam Adams Utopia. So if you're not a W Blues, you should be a Pine Box. We're turning all the lines Definitely. over to all Super right. Bowl teams on Super Bowl Sunday, with some exceptions. You can always get single cut there, and a few other good local beers. Uh, some other stuff going on in February. We got Jeff that. and Heather. I'm really glad you guys came on. 
And it's so great to meet you guys because it is my favorite beer bar in Bushwick. I'll tell you that. Thank you. Awesome. Well, yeah. you guys can attest to this. Like, if you open your own business and you're on the ground, like, I have no social life either. Yeah. You know, yeah, you like, better love what you I'm lucky if I get the mail. Yeah, <laughs> Don't you own a bar? Come on. Yeah. Your social life is the bar. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Mr. Postman. It's so nice to talk to somebody other than a beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you guys, you must have, is your tap room open in, in Queens? Uh, it is, yeah. We're open uh, Thursdays uh, now, six to ten. Uh, Friday six to ten. Saturday one to eleven, and s- we're opening up on Sundays. So we're going to open up Sundays one to six. Um, so in Astoria, so, so, Queens. That's yeah. Awesome. So and we're going to start serving food soon. Uh, Australian meat pies, which are is it, top is it, notch. Is it D U B dub pies? Uh, no, There's but it's guy. similar. There's it's a small, uh, tight circle of uh, Australian meat pies in your Yeah, city. yes, there is a, yeah. an inner circle of Australian meat pies, yes. Uh, Always so good. So we're going to have uh, pints there and uh, growlers to go. Um, and we're going to have live music starting in a couple weeks. Cheers to you guys. Thank you, Jim. And, and, and Sean, also, one more thing. Yeah. Well, I just want to say one thing. You can make your Saturday hours 1 to 10, oh, but so keep it up good. to 11. Because your tasting room goes to eleven. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and hey, on the on the New York City uh, Beer Week site, um, yeah, New York City New Beer Week's coming back. We're all back around and, New, York, uh, New, York, New York City Beer the Week. The featured event for the third year is the New York City Brewers Choice, co-presented by Beer Sessions Radio. It's February twenty seventh at City Winery. City Go to goodbrewsteel dot com to learn more about Get it. Get your tickets now. That's right. And I'd like to thank our sponsors at GreatBrewers dot com always, who've helped to bring this podcast to you tonight. Beer Sessions Radio is also supported by the Good Beer Seal. So thanks to everyone. Jeff, Heather, Ryan, Rich, Brian, Sean, and not Dave. It's supposed to be Dave from Bronx Ale House, but he couldn't make it. For joining me here on the Heritage Radio Network, I'm Jimmy Carboni. Thanks to our producers, Jack Inslee, Brie O'Connor, and engineer Joe Galarag, whose birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time on Beer Sessions Radio. Thanks for listening to this program on heritageradionetwork.org. You can find all of our archived programs on our website or as podcasts in the iTunes store by searching Heritage Radio Network. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at heritage underscore radio. You can email us questions at any time at info at heritageradionetwork.org. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization. To donate and become a member, visit our website today. Thanks for listening. Hey there, I'm Lee Ullman here with some big news from the National Young Farmers Coalition. We're partnering with Heritage Radio Network on a special season of The Farm Report. It's all about what's happening with the Farm Bill and how it impacts farmers and eaters. I am growing diversified vegetables on land that's been in our family for 150 years. And so with the pandemic, gentrification, property values going up, we had to sell the land and we lost it. Join us as we uncover the untold stories behind this massive piece of legislation that shapes how we grow our food, what we eat, and so much more. The problems we have had, those are things that come from earlier Farm Bill and USDA policy, right? Like, Earl Butts, get big or get out. You know, it's my responsibility to know not only what I'm eating, but then like how, how that all came to be. And realize, like, wow, like this piece of legislation, all this money, like, it's technically something that I support as a taxpayer. While Congress debates the next farm bill, this is not just an invitation to listen. It's a call to action. Be part of the conversation. Subscribe to the Farm Report on Heritage Radio Network wherever you listen to podcasts.